We're here at the Institute of Fundraising National Convention 2009 with Bernard Ross, Director of the Management Centre. Bernard, tell us more about the research projects you've just launched. We're doing several pieces of research, Howard, because I think uh, there's a lot of opinion out there that, that pretends to be fact, and we're very interested in data. So we've done two pieces, two linked pieces of research, one of which repeats from what we did last year, one of which builds on it. So last year, in the middle of the crunch, the crisis, we asked 115 of the most experienced, most knowledgeable fundraising experts around the world, how do you think the crunch is going to impact on you by country, by region, by area, meaning like education, social welfare, the arts, emergency response? And lastly, what do you think you should do about that, uh, the realities? And, you know, do you think you should expand or shrink or fight for share, whatever. I'm going to repeat that piece of research a year later to see whether those same people, those same highly, highly knowledgeable group of people, have changed their mind or are more pessimistic or less pessimistic. But we decided that wasn't really enough. We wanted to say the crunch or the crisis or the cutback of the recession will stop. At some point, no matter what happens, it will stop. And we thought, could we ask that same group and maybe an extended group to look 10 years into the future and come up with some scenarios. So the second project we're running, which is kind of linked, is about hosting a series of dinners. We've had one in Durban in South Africa. Uh, we're having one in Washington next week. We're having one tomorrow night here in London. Uh, we're having one in New York. We're having uh, one in Australia, one in Buenos Aires. And each of those dinners, we're asking people some questions, some scenario-based questions about what do you think the world of fundraising will be like in 10 years' time? Um, what will the age of donors be? Will older donors be more anxious? Will younger donors be coming more to the fore? Um, what extent will fundraising will be online? I mean, we've all heard the, the, demise of, the demise of DM has been predicted for the last at least 50 years, I would guess. It's like the paperless office. I mean, you know, it's never, we are supposed to have a paperless office. We have more paper than we've ever had before and more computers. So, you know, is fundraising genuinely moving online? Uh, have major donors disappeared forever? Uh, what's happening to the Gulf? You know, is the Gulf gonna become stronger? We're we gonna see the growth of the first genuine INGO that comes out of the Gulf. So. We're asking questions about location, about format, about structure, about donors, about media. Um, I'm going to draw those up into a series of scenarios, and we're going to put them in September. We're launching, on September the 10th, we're launching that research. And um, people will then be able to vote on the scenario that they think is most likely, and also download them as a stimulus for their board, for their colleagues, whatever. So it's, it's asking a lot of smart people, what do you think the world will be like in 10 years' time? And that voting will be open to fundraisers yeah. around the world? the idea is, I, I think we've tried to keep the, the people involved in designing the SARS to a relatively small number of people, uh, rather grandly titled global experts, but people who have at least a regional, meaning European, take on things, um, European or North American or South American, that, that's what we mean by region. And what we're asking people to do then is to say what, what they think is most likely. But all of this is just... Do I want to say a guess? A prediction. So it'll be interesting in 10 years' time. But it might inform people's strategy, and it'll certainly be interesting to see what people think. And you'll present the initial findings in Holland? Uh, no, you? we're having a seminar um, uh, of our own uh, called Global Fundraising Futures, which is designed to address probably a slightly different audience from Holland, a slightly more senior audience, or audience that's more interested in thinking ahead, whereas I always think Holland as being about best practice, current best practice. Um, so we're going to try and bring some more senior people together to, to talk about what, what the next thing, is. rather than what the last thing was, which is interesting, what's the next thing which is exciting and risky and scary? And all based on data. Uh, and all based, uh, based on opinion and, and some data. Okay. And your latest book uh, is doing rather well, I believe. How kind of you to say so. <laughs> Not well enough. If, if, if anyone out there hasn't bought a copy, it's... It, Buy it now before it's available 10 for a pound in, um, <laughs> in Walmart. Um, well, the flattering thing about the book is that it's been very well received um, in the States. Uh, it's published by an American publisher, so you, you want to shift them in the States. It's been voted uh, into the top five by the New York Times Online um, must-read books 
So they didn't, I wish it had been in the must-buy books, but it's just in the must-read books. And really it's about the psychology of interpersonal action and reaction. So why are some individuals working for the same cause so much better than other individuals? What is it about their, their ability to get on with people? Um, we coached, uh, at the other end, we coached a woman who had to go out to, to make a pitch in Saudi Arabia to the Saudi royal family. She had to do it entirely dressed in a burqa. This is a European woman dressed in a burqa out of respect for the faith issues. How is she supposed to use her body language? And we were able to give her some advice about that. And interesting, we've just been working with a large animal charity um, who were offered the chance to pitch in LA to a pop star. I can't feel the name of the charity or the pop star. And we were able to, we spent half a day looking at videoed interviews by the pop star, which we downloaded on YouTube, and we were able to spot some psychological preferences in that person, which meant that the animal charity did a much more effective pitch. So are there some skills that we can learn psychologically to adapt ourselves to be more attractive to donors, whether it's major donors or people on the street or the way websites are designed? I think there's some interesting stuff in that. And here at the National Convention, you're about to give a presentation. Can you give us a quick idea of what you'll be talking about today? Well, one of the presentations about that, that book is called Magic, Mind, Reading and Money, a slightly exotic title, um, to try and show some of those principles at work. And we're also doing a presentation on innovation, which is a rather big issue for us as a company. And we're working globally now, helping UNICEF uh, become more innovative in its fundraising and that's not about having good ideas it's about having an innovative process how do you how do you become good at actually putting lots of ideas through and developing them that's i think that's the next big thing i think that's i agree with kotler when he says the only competitive edge is innovation full stop and bernard where can we find out more about the management center uh, well, you can go onto our, uh, our international website, which is www.managementcentre.com, still spelled the British way, or if you want just interested in the UK URL, it's www.managementcentre.co.uk. Bernard Ross, Director of the Management Centre, thank you very much. Thank you, Howard.